Holy City Center Radio, it is episode 154, and I am your host, Christian Sanger. Today is Wednesday, August 2nd, 2023. Yes, it is August, and this recording is happening as there's a couple stories breaking right now, so I will try to update you depending on what updates come through while I'm recording this. Uh, but yes, today, uh, as far as me recording, it's Tuesday, August 1st. You're going to be hearing this on Wednesday, August 2nd, as I mentioned at the top. Uh, the first story is the sentencing sentencing hearing for Russell Lafitte. He is that banker who has ties to Alec Murdoch. Uh, he'd already been found guilty. Uh, he's basically, he is uh, tied to some of the schemes that Alec had with uh, defrauding uh, victims out of insurance money and things like that. There could be a decision on his sentencing coming down while I record this. If that happens, I will update you. Uh, if it happens after I finish recording, then you know we'll look to Friday's episode. Uh, the other breaking news, honestly, just a few minutes before I got on the air, and by that I mean started recording as this isn't actually live, of course, um, there is something going on at the Charleston International Airport. Uh, there really is nothing concrete at the moment. Just as I started recording, the airport sent out an alert saying that commercial flights have been temporarily suspended at the airport due to an ongoing incident. That's all they've said about it is an ongoing incident. They said travelers are asked to check in with their individual airlines before arriving at the airport for their flight. So that's it. As I was uh, just about to start recording, that came through. I, you know, trying to see if there's even unconfirmed reports of anything, uh, you know, from people who are actually at the airport. But uh, so far, I haven't been able to find anything. And obviously, I'm not going to scour the Internet um, while we are, um, you know, while I'm trying to relay these stories to you and actually get this uh as you can tell even doing this i'm distracted so um if i see anything i'll be sure to update you during the podcast but i wanted to make you aware at the top that as far as both of these stories whatever's going on at the airport and the sentencing for russell lafitte uh, i'm aware uh, that when you're listening to this there's probably lots of updates and news on both of those situations uh, but you know the way this works. Unfortunately, uh, I will be unable to to really give you a good update until uh, Friday, assuming we have some answers by then. So just wanted to touch on that at the top. Uh, but no further ado, let's get into the rest of the news. This also happened on a day of recording Tuesday, but uh, was finalized this morning. So I can share with you that a judge has denied bond for Jamie Komarowski during a hearing that was held this Tuesday morning in downtown Charleston. Komarowski, you may remember, is accused of hitting and killing a new bride during a DUI crash that occurred back in April on Folly Beach. Uh, she and her legal team were asking a judge to grant her bail after spending months behind bars. She's been there since the accident happened. We talked about this on a previous episode. They were hoping to get her some bond. They even said, we think this amount will be good. Uh, and we're saying things like, uh, you know, this is where she's going to go. Uh, we'll make sure she has check-ins. She doesn't have a car. She can't go anywhere, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but the judge decided uh, that that was not going to happen. The judge's name is Michael Nettles. He did, as I mentioned, decide to ultimately deny the bond. However, he did say that if there is no trial um, that's actually set by spring of 2024, a bond of $150,000 will be set with house arrest requirements, along with a set of monitors and other standards that will have to be met. So if there is no trial by the spring of 2024, that bond will be issued and she will have the chance to get out as long as she agrees to those provisions. So that is the longest she'll be in jail as far as leading up to a trial. Uh, if a trial happens sooner than that, then, you know, if she's found not guilty or what have you, she could get out. But I would not bank on that. During the hearing, family members, uh, the victim's family members uh, did speak. Uh, the bride's name was Samantha Miller. And uh, some of her family members spoke uh, during Tuesday morning's hearing, as did Komarowski's family, for that matter, uh, trying to say why should she get out and, you know, that they're going to watch after her and, you know, keep her on the up and up and, and so on and so forth. So uh, and her family had some 
you know, there were some emotional moments, uh, according to reports. Number one, Komarowski, by the way, did not speak during this, but she was becoming visibly emotional at parts, uh, especially apparently when her family was talking about her. Um, and obviously, Samantha Miller's family uh, had some very emotional moments as well and had some very pointed words uh, for Komarowski. Uh, no surprise there, you know, considering what happened and, and that they lost a member of their family. So she will be in jail. Uh, she has been charged with reckless homicide resulting in death and three counts of felony DUI in connection with that April 28th crash. Um, as I mentioned, she's accused of colliding with a golf cart or a similar vehicle that was carrying Samantha Miller and her new husband, Eric Hutchinson, and some others. Uh, the new bride was killed while the groom suffered serious injuries in that crash. And as we've talked about, they were married just hours beforehand. A toxicology report revealed that Komarowski's blood alcohol level was three times the legal limit. In addition to this, you know, normal criminal case that's going on, uh, Hutchinson, the uh, husband, also filed a wrongful death lawsuit against her, claiming she was bar hopping in the hours leading up to the deadly crash. As I mentioned, Komarowski has been housed at the Al Cannon Detention Center since her initial arrest. Her attorneys say she is an exceptional student with a tight-knit family bond, and we're hoping that would help her perhaps get out of jail. As she, They argued she posed no danger to the community and was not a flight risk. The judge ultimately decided uh, that was inaccurate and denied bond, as I mentioned. So uh, as for now, we we'll probably won't hear much about the story until a trial date is set. Uh, but I knew a lot of you were very interested in what was going to happen today. So again, uh, Komarowski was denied bond. All right. As promised, uh, instead of getting to the next story I had planned, I do have an update for you on the incident at the Charleston International Airport, or at least, again, this is real time on Tuesday when I'm recording. So these details may change. It's a fluid situation. But news too, I just got an alert. Uh, they have updated their story, and they have said that the Charleston County Sheriff's Office has confirmed that one of their helicopters crashed near the airport. Thankfully, the Sheriff's Office said no serious injuries uh, are currently being reported. Again, who knows if any of these details will change. Uh, so forgive me if come Wednesday when you're listening to this, we have some updates. But as of right now, they're saying no serious injuries. Now, the Sheriff's Office confirmed that. However, News 2 says they are still working to confirm that the helicopter crash is the reason for the ground stop at the airport. Seems like this may be what's going on and why they've grounded flights, but there's been no confirmation yet. So that appears is what's going on. Um, if that is the case, it, the good news is it seems no one was hurt and there's nothing you know, ongoing. Uh, but again, that's as I'm recording this uh, Tuesday afternoon around 4 p.m. Uh, so obviously some things can change. As I said, if I get further updates as I'm recording, I'll be sure to pass those along. Otherwise, we'll circle back on Friday. All right, now back to the planned stories for this episode. Uh, this is a bummer. The, the Sparrow in Park Circle recently announced that at the end of this year, they are going to be no more, or at least... The current iteration of it in Park Circle is going to fly away, as it were. So in January of 2024, this North Charleston bar will officially close its doors at 1078 East Montague Avenue. Uh, this is after almost 12 years of business. And the reason for the closure is because the lease is not being renewed. However, the bar may find new life somewhere else next year. I'll have a little bit more on that here in a moment. Cammie Kind, who is the owner of the Sparrow, said the decision came down to business and the legal terms in the leases for the Sparrow and its neighbor, Azul Mexicano. Kind told the Post and Courier that she had plans to make comedian Josh Bates a partner in the bar and add him to the lease. So when she approached her landlord, uh, she said that uh, he actually declined to do this because Azul had to exercise its first right of refusal, which was included in its lease. Now, Azul is in the same building that the Sparrow is as far as, you know, it's when you drive in Park Circle, these buildings are all connected. Um, you know, not you can't walk. You have to go outside, obviously, to go to a new business, but, you know, they're the same part of the same building. So apparently it had first right of refusal built into its lease and they said no. Uh, so now that means the Sparrow, when its lease is up, is going to be closing. 
Uh, however, that doesn't mean, as I said, that the Sparrow itself will necessarily be gone forever. And it also doesn't mean that a new program, that a new series that had been going on at the venue called Comedy at the Sparrow, that is not going away either. Uh, Bates, who I mentioned before, the comedian, uh, who also has a podcast, by the way, uh, he w- he kind of oversees this Comedy at the Sparrow series. They have some uh, events still scheduled for the remainder of this year, and he plans to continue on with that branding somewhere else. He's going to continue to look at scheduling and promoting other shows. Uh, but in any event, He told the Post and Courier that he and an undisclosed business partner plan to open a new comedy club and bar somewhere in the Charleston area. As far as Cammie Kine, the owner of the Sparrow Bates, said that she will stay on as a consultant as they move into running this comedy club and bar. Uh, Kine has said, ultimately, although she was hoping to continue the lease, she's going to take the opportunity to you know spend some more time with family, uh, and that's why she's at this point looks like she's coming on as just a consultant, as far as you know, not being a full time owner or anything like that. So we're at whatever happens with this comedy club and bar new name, if it's somehow kept the same, uh, it may incorporate some branding and other pieces from the Sparrow. We'll see. That's all to be determined. But one thing that seems to be known for sure is that the club will not be in Park Circle, according to Bates. He said he tried to find a building in that area to keep this community that they built, you know, in, in Park Circle. Uh, but ultimately, they they could not find any matches in that area. So I'll be sure to keep you updated on what happens with this planned comedy club and bar. But uh, as, unless there's something, you know, unforeseen that happens, the Sparrow and Park Circle will be closing at the end of this year. Certainly a bummer. I've been there a handful of times. It's a nice, you know, people throw on the term dive bar a lot, and it has different meanings. But it truly felt like a dive bar. Um, not in the dirty, dingy sense that some people think of dive bars, but just in the, you could go there depending on the time of day and it can be pretty quiet. No one's really judging you. It's not like you don't have to come in your best clothes and get ready for, you know, like some of these clubs downtown. Uh, you come as you are, hang out, have some drinks and relax. And uh, yeah, it always seemed like a cool place to be. They have put on uh, another cool thing that they've done through the years. You know, they've done some comedy shows, which a lot of venues don't do around here. They also brought in a lot of bands that you wouldn't necessarily see at other venues, uh, specifically from genres like metal, um, you know, which, you know, something that you wouldn't see at one of the more mainstream, you know, clubs and things. So Definitely sad to see them go, uh, but hopefully Bates and and whoever his uh, partner is uh, will get something similar to it up and running uh, in the near future. We have an update on that story in Somerville involving uh, a child that was found unresponsive and ultimately died um, when they were found, as I mentioned, unresponsive in a pond in, in a neighborhood there. Somerville police have said there is an arrest in connection to that uh, horrible event. Um, So if you don't remember, back on July 8th, the Somerville Police Department responded to a call of a person floating in a retention pond in a local neighborhood. When they arrived, they realized that person was a young child. It was about 530 in the evening. Um, When they tried to get there, they had a hard time getting in the gate. There was a gate that had a passcode. After trying the code they were given a few times, you can there's they released dash cam video and body cam video, so you can go search for this. Police started jumping the gate so they could get to this person, and they tried uh, life-saving measures once they got the child out of the water, but unfortunately, it was for naught as the child passed. Uh, so a lot of people are wondering what happened here. Well, uh, what they have determined uh, is that the grandmother of the victim uh, – is going to be held responsible and has been arrested. The grandmother's name is Faith Robinson. She is 63 years old and is currently being held at the Dorchester County Detention Center. Um, The police said that they determined probable cause existed to arrest her, um, and she was ultimately charged with one count of unlawful conduct toward a child. Officials say if she's found guilty, Robinson could face up to 10 years behind bars. Obviously, there's a ways to go before we get to that. So officials ultimately landed on this arrest as after they learned from interviews with family members that the boy actually had a history of walking out of the home and Robinson herself had knowledge of that history. According to reports, Robinson left the home when the two-year-old was in the living room and she left the front door unlocked. 
Police say when Robinson came back to the home, she noticed the child was gone and just assumed he had gone upstairs. Nearly 30 minutes later, police called the family and told them the two-year-old boy had been found dead. It's just a horrible situation, and you know we'll see what comes out in this case. But as of right now, it's what police are saying. And again, we got to let this all play out in the courts and everything. But it appears the grandmother left a two-year-old child home alone for a little bit of time. It, it didn't specify how long it was, but left a two-year-old home alone with the door unlocked. When she came back and didn't see him, just assumed he was upstairs and didn't bother looking. So if, if that's true, it, it certainly you know fits the charges of you know this unlawful conduct. You know this is negligent for sure. But again, that's according to these reports. We'll see what happens, but. A sad update to an already uh, horrific story. Remember that roller coaster at Carowinds that had the pretty sizable crack uh, in one of its pillars uh, and that ride ultimately shut down? Well, it appears there's another problem with the ride. Something called a weld indication was discovered on this coaster, which is called the Fury 325. Uh, and uh, the original issue was with a support column, as I mentioned. They replaced that column and were in the process of testing the ride and checking for any other issues. And that's when they came across this thing called a weld indication, which, according to News 2, could be either a break or a crack somewhere on the ride. At this point, the ride has been out of service. They were still testing it, so it is it was not in operation as far as people being able to get on the ride. So that's a good thing, and, and it's also a good sign that they're they're finding these issues during this process because that's what people worried about. You know, how could you miss this big crack? It was brought to their attention by someone in the park. So not great that there's another issue of some kind with the ride, but good that they're finding these issues and then we'll fix them and then get the ride back operational again and test it before they'll actually have people get on the ride. All right, that'll do it for this edition of Holy City Center Radio. Uh, on Friday's episode, like I said, I'll have updates on the situation at the Charleston airport and whether the helicopter crash near it was related to them grounding flights temporarily or if it was something else altogether. Uh, so I'll have updates on that as well as the Russell Lafitte uh, conviction uh, and what his sentencing, not his conviction, rather the sentencing, I should say. Um, we'll ha I'll have updates on that on Friday's episode. Thank you for listening, and hopefully I will be able to be in your ears on Friday. That sounded creepy. I didn't mean it to be that way. Uh, but if you want updates on these stories, plus whatever else is going on in town, be sure to subscribe to this podcast so you don't miss a single episode. While you're doing that, please rate and review the podcast as well, as that will help get this podcast in other people's ears. Uh, I want to thank you and for not just listening, but anyone who has supported the podcast through those measures. It's greatly appreciated. And I also want to thank anyone who has supported the website and podcast in any other way, including going to patreon.com slash Holy City Center and signing up for one of those support tiers or purchasing merchandise at holycitycenter.com slash shop. Of course, I also have to thank Tyler Boone, whose music you hear in each and every episode of Holy City Center Radio, and Cole Collins, who's with LMC Sound System and produces each episode. Looking forward to speaking to you all on Friday. Stay safe out there. Stay cool in this heat. And, of course, as always, good night and good luck. <laughs>